Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss the INF Treaty and Trump's declaration of withdrawal from it. We have with us D. Raghunandan. Raghu, you have been observing this issue for quite some time. Could you tell us what is the INF Treaty and what did it imply before we go on to the issue of its yeah. withdrawal by the United States? See, the INF Treaty came as a part of a sequence of uh, gradual slowdown of the nuclear competition between the US and the then Soviet Union, especially in the context of potential confrontation in Europe, which was threatening to get out of hand uh, at one point. And uh, the INF Treaty specifically was designed to uh, reduce uh, tensions between the US and the Soviets by uh, eliminating intermediate range land based missiles, uh, which was, the, of course, the major threat in the European continent. So it did uh, not include context. air. Craft, it does not include air-based air -based or sea-based sea -based uh, missiles. missiles because the, the whole context of that was Europe. And also the range was 500 to 5,500 5, kilometers. Uh, kilometers. So the essential threat was perceived to be what can happen if a conflict breaks out and you have theater-based uh, nuclear armed uh, weaponry flying across so the land mass of there Europe. was also a separate treaty for tactical nuclear weapons, that's which right. are what are called battlefield that's nuclear right. weapons. That's right. But so that even, was a separate yeah, measure. But even this really targets both short range and medium range, ranging from 500 to about 5,500 5, 5, uh, or so. So the treaty was finally drawn up uh, between the US and the Soviet Union with uh, under Gorbachev uh, at that time, Reagan and uh, Gorbachev, and then uh, solidified. And more than 2,700 such missiles were decommissioned on both sides. Uh, there was a 10-year verification uh, program, which also went through. Then gradually this began to unravel with uh, potential new generations of missiles, anti-missile uh, systems, both sides feeling a threat. But it was actually George W. Bush who first said he wanted to withdraw from uh, this treaty because he wanted to go ahead with what was then called the National Missile Defense Program. So he withdrew from the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty, That's the ABM right. Treaty. That's right. Interestingly, John Bolton was the architect of that as well. Precisely. Okay. And John Bolton has been talking about also withdrawal from the INF Treaty from that time. Right. But really that withdrawal was the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty. And now we have the second step, the uh, the INF Treaty, That's right. but it, as you were talking about the risk of all of this unraveling was also because so-called ABM shields were put up on the borders of exactly. Soviet Russia, not Soviet Union, exactly. Russia, exactly. and that meant the threat to Russia was increasing Precisely. as perceived by the Russian Federation. Precisely, and uh, the US was keen on expanding its anti-missile defenses and the more one side promoted anti-missile defenses, the other felt this was a negation of the mutual deterrence uh, and therefore that it was negating their missile defense, then they started countermeasures. That's a very interesting point because actually the mutually assured destruction being the basis of exactly. dismantling some of these nuclear programs was that we should ensure that defense could also become offense. You right. wipe out first 90% uh, of the opposition right. missiles, and then you stop the 10% means you have a possibility of a victory. That's Therefore, right. the ABM was anti-ballistic missile shields were seen to be an increase of tensions That's because right. the only way that you do it is by putting more missiles. Exactly the point. 
So then uh, that was one part of it with George W. wanting to uh, uh, entrench the uh, uh, anti-ballistic missile uh, systems, the nuclear missile defense uh, shields uh, that they wanted. And then, of course, came the collapse of the Soviet Union and the uh, eastward march of NATO or the right up to, up to the borders. border of Russia. And at that point, Russia felt the need then to start ratcheting up its own missile defenses and a crunch point seemed to come, what has often been called the European Missile Crisis in the early 90s, when uh, Russia was going to deploy its SS-20 uh, missiles. Which that's, that is the start of the INF Treaty, that's actually. Right. That's this right. is the 80s that's discussions right. in which that's SS-20s right. that's and right. Pershing twos were uh, exactly. stopped and so on. Exactly. But coming back to the specific yeah. withdrawal, yeah. the Trump administration claims that the, U, the, United, the, the United States has detected <coughs> Russian violation of the INF Treaty, yeah. and they have specifically targeted a particular name of the missile, which yeah. is commonly being called the Novator missile. That's right. That that That's is right. in violation of the That's range right. that has been prescribed. How yeah. do you look at this? See, they, these many such missiles have been under development. And the INF Treaty, in fact, did not stand in the way of research and development. It only standed in the way of actual weaponization and deployment. So as we were just discussing, Russia, when it felt that NATO forces were threatening right up to the borders of uh, Russia, felt the need to counter it uh, and had started moving from research and development to potential deployment of the Novator uh, missiles. Now, the US claims it has um, currently highly classified documents to show deployment uh, taking place. But if you to speak to the Russians, the Russians have been documenting over the past several years deployment by the United States in Poland and in Romania of missile launchers, which are nominally anti-missile systems but if you can launch a missile against missiles, the same land-based missile launchers can also be uh, targeted against land systems. And Russia sees tactical theater weapons at its border and then feels the need to counter that. Now, coming back to this issue, what you talk about the European theater, yeah. it's interesting. If Russia is threatening Europe, Yes. None of the European states have protested. None, not one is on record supporting the United States on its Novator claims. Yes. So how do you take this? If the threat to Europe is felt only by the United States, and the United States should then not be concerned about the INF missiles, you know, the intermediate range missiles. So how do you take this? See, this is a strange uh, <clears throat> phenomenon because countries which are going to be threatened by this are not the old, the old Europe, uh, which was at the forefront. They were the front line uh, of NATO. And in fact, it was Germany in the 80s who actually pushed the United States to take a more aggressive position because Germany felt it was uh, right on the front line and felt threatened. But they were also the uh, ones to actually push the INF Treaty. Exactly my point. So they were the ones to push today it's the Eastern European countries who are playing that role. So you get the pressure coming today from Poland and uh, Romania and Hungary and countries like that who have become the new frontline uh, states against uh, this. Interestingly, by the way, a lot of this push is coming from John Bolton, uh, as you said. And just like you said, the major Western European powers have not commented much on this except to say that they consider this an unfortunate move because they see this as then leading to a spiral of uh, redevelopment and redeployment of theater weapons which will again threaten them because if there are missiles flying across Europe 
they are most probably going to explode over Germany. <laughs> or over Poland or, or over or, Romania. Ex it's exactly. interesting, some of the arms control critics have said, I mean, arms control experts have said, this is the argument, nothing is better than something. Right. This seems to be the American position right. today. So the interesting thing is that while John Bolton is being seen as an architect, from the National Security uh, Agency, we have had no comments coming so far either from the US State Department or the US Defense Department. So this seems to be a very much a White House John Bolton uh, push uh, on this issue. Well, you know, one of the problems that is United States, we don't understand it from afar. What makes them do things they do? Because you see all international treaties, the U.S. has been violating each and every one of them exactly. and has pulled out of them. But it's climate change to exactly. seas, to space, name an international treaty, exactly. it has withdrawn from it. Exactly. Iran being the latest one. Yes. The only question that arises is, does a president have the right to withdraw from a treaty which has been signed by the Senate, but we leave it to the That's U.S. Right. congressional analysts That's to talk right. about. Thank you, Raghu, for being with us today. I think we need to uh, watch how these issues Quite. develop because as yet it's an announcement That's whether right. it will translate to a final withdrawal with the sanction of the U.S. Congress, we have to see. That's right. That's all the time we have for NewsClick today. Do keep watching NewsClick, visiting our website.